everybody. Well, it's a day that ends in Y, so there's a new existential threat to America caused by the Biden regime. Vladimir Putin threatening nuclear war after the Nord Stream 2 pipelines that supply energy to Europe from Russia was destroyed by saboteurs. Putin says the U.S. is responsible and that it's an act of war, and it would be an act of war if it's proven that the U.S. did, in fact, commit this attack on the Russian energy pipelines. The Russians are citing multiple instances where Joe Biden and others in his regime threatened the pipeline. Here is when Joe Biden said it himself. Watch. Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But, do, but how will you how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will. Uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. Hmm. Didn't say anything about sanctions or any other means. Um, and so what did that mean? You can see how someone could draw the conclusion that Vladimir Putin is using like a commercial on a wheel, right, over and over again in Russia to prove that he is now at liberty to do whatever he wants to the United States uh, all the way and up until nuclear war. Now, over at Gateway Pundit and many sites around the conservative web, it's being theorized that there is only one country that had the motive and the means to carry out this attack on Russia's energy pipeline, and it's the United States. Former Missouri State Senator political consultant John Loudon here also happens to be my husband, in case you're wondering why we share the name. John, this article over at Gateway Pundit indicates that only the U.S. could have done this. Uh, what are your thoughts? Why would the Biden regime want to do this? Well, uh, two-part question. Uh, they would want to do it because Germany's wobbly, just as the article, and it's a very, uh, very interesting article. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Bill Hennessy's. I mean, he does great, great work. I advise people to check it out. But um, I'm not sure I agree that, uh, that we are the only country that could have done it. Um, shoot, what about Norway? Uh, now Norway's uh, sitting in a catbird seat. They can use uh, energy from anywhere in the world and ship it over to Europe, mm -hmm. including Russian energy now has to go through Norway. So um, if there's a country that benefits uh, more than Norway, I'm not sure who that is. Now, does Biden benefit by uh, keeping Germany uh, on the same side and, and uh, playing ball in this globalist war uh, in Ukraine? Absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt the Biden administration is really enjoying this war. And they're, they're sending billions of U.S. tax dollars with, with what nobody can see as any amount of serious accountability. So where is that money going? Who's getting paid off? Uh, does Hunter have some hands in that? Uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it theoretically could have been, and, and Bill Hennessy does explain in this article, as, as we talked about yesterday here on the show, uh, that it could be, um, it could be a number of things. It could be an inside job by Russia, just giving them an excuse mm -hmm. to do whatever they want to do. Um, but um, it really comes down to being sort of a Cuban missile crisis, doesn't it? Because ultimately, we don't know who did it. We may never know who did it. Um, we can say that it wasn't the U.S., although Joe Biden's statement there, I, you can certainly see how Putin wants to use that against him. But the reality of the matter and what actually means something is that there are now warships off the coast of Alaska. And uh, this could mean nukes. And in fact, Putin said as much that he feels entitled now to use nukes. So what should the American response be now? Well, this president's just uh, horrible and needs to uh, needs to just be reined in severely. Um, it, it's distressing, and I, I think there is a good chance that uh, that a lot of people in D.C. are wanting to remove him, as your earlier segment suggested. Um, but I think it's a big reminder to all Americans that we need to beef up our own supply chain. Uh, mm. What if what if the conflict happens? What if it's Taiwan? And uh, we jump in on the side of Taiwan, as the, as the president has suggested he would. He'd send troops over there. Uh, what does China do uh, to us? You know, we get, 
almost 100% of our cobalt and other rare earth metals are uh, coming out of China. We know that from COVID, aspirin's coming out of China. Uh, what happens if we suddenly don't have basics like aspirin and cobalt and cobalt's and everything our, our batteries our vitamin b uh, radiation mm -hmm. therapy um mm -hmm. we're 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 sunk uh without those rare earth metals and uh, we have absolutely no capability uh to refine or uh refine them in the u.s it's all in china almost all yeah and and president trump understood this which is why he challenged mm -hmm. germany uh to you know, get off of their severe dependence on Russia. But this is where we find ourselves. So now what do we do? Yes, well, and, and full disclosure, I, I'm involved with a rare earth metals refining uh, operation that's going to start in the U.S. very soon. Um, but we need a lot more. Uh, we have to have to get uh, we have to get refining uh, of these things. You know, in Missouri, we had the last lead smelter uh, in the country was dough run lead manufacturing. People can look it up. Biden was very proud to shut that smelter down. So all U.S. lead ore goes over to China where they smelt it and then we have to get it back to make Teslas so <laughs> and car batteries. So it's just, it's, it's insane that, that uh, previous administrations have allowed our country to be totally dependent on China for all these things. And if you, you don't need to look no further than the news every day and see what Europe's going through with their dependency on Russia to know we cannot be dependent uh, for these basic elements. So what, what can we do at this point? I mean, really, we, we find ourselves um, at the forefront of a bona fide nuclear war at this point. Um, what can Americans do? What, what, can, what message can we send? Um, what do you think will happen next? Well, in Congress, uh, they can play a huge role. Um, you know, they're they're putting all this effort into infrastructure, the the Build Back Better, the the infrastructure deal. Uh, they want to build, you know, car charging stations and windmills and solar farms. That's all great, but we need to be investing in getting those elements uh, mined in the U.S. and refined in the U.S. Uh, we we are not dependent on the world for oil. Biden's trying to make us dependent on the world for oil, but we do still get most of our oil from here. Um, but we get 100% of these elements uh, f yeah. that are refined overseas. And, and that's yeah. a problem, refined by our enemy. Yeah, so that's yeah a problem. no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And uh, please no more windmill farms and no more solar farms. I'm fine with solar on your house or your <laughs> boat or whatever, but no more farms. No, John, that's a bad suggestion. We'll take this up at home later. I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right, John, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. And uh, sure am thrilled to know that at least uh, you and your colleagues are going to be doing some refining in the United States. This will be, as I understand it, the only uh, rare metals refinery of any of them uh, in the United States that's not in China. So this is mm -hmm. this is really great. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.